Welcome back to the channel. Today we are reviewing the Haybike Ranger S. Now with me being a former Army Ranger, well, when Haybike said, would you like to review one of our bikes? Well, of course, I'm gonna pick the one with the Ranger name on it. I tell you what, this thing is full of features, so let's get into it. When it comes to the assembly of this bike, it was pretty easy. All I had to do was follow the directions, take my time, and things turned out just fine. Now the Ranger S is gonna come to you as a class three e-bike, which means you'll go up to 28 miles an hour via this thumb throttle here on your right hand side, your torque sensor, and your five levels of pedal assist. The 750 watt version of this bike comes with a cadence sensor instead of a torque sensor. The Ranger S weighs 72 pounds, but has a maximum payload capacity of 400 pounds. And during the making of this video, they're having a Black Friday sale. You can get this bike for $13.99, or you can get the 750 watt version for only $11.99. And all of these bikes come with a two year warranty. The Ranger S only comes in a step through. I believe that's what the S is for, for step through. And Hey Bike says that the average rider height is from 4'11 to 6'3. It also comes in four colors, Merlot Red, Stone Blue, Shark Gray, and this metallic sand version that I have right here. Now Hey Bike says that the Ranger S will go up to 55 miles on a single battery charge. If you've seen any of my videos, you know that we're not gonna get anywhere near that kind of mileage from the abuse I'm gonna put this bike through. My version of the Ranger S comes with a 48 volt, 1000 watt rear hub motor. It has a peak power of 1800 watts and an impressive 100 Newton meters of torque. It has a seven speed transmission, a Shimano Tourney derailleur, a derailleur guard, and a standard seven speed thumb shifter. For stopping power, you have the RSX two piston hydraulic brake system and 180 millimeter rotors. The front forks are hydraulic. They have 65 millimeters of travel. You can preload the settings and you can lock it out. I am a big fan of the mag wheels that is on this bike. You have these six spokes right here. It looks really cool. The tires are from CST. They're 20 by four inch. They have a medium mountain bike pattern on them and they're puncture resistant. Let's talk about the battery on this bike. It is hidden in this down tube right here. Here is the cover of it. It is a 48 volt, 14.4 amps with 692 watt hours of power. You can charge it while it's inside the bike. There's a charging port right down here, or you can remove it and charge it somewhere else. Now the charger that it comes with this is an impressive four watt hour charger, which means you can charge this entire bike up in three to four hours. When it comes to removing this battery, you're gonna receive two keys with the bike. You're just gonna use one of them, put it in the key slot, move the key forward, and it opens up your battery. From there, your battery can pop right on out. If you are charging it inside or something like that, you can hit this little power charge cord right there. It tells you how full the battery is. This is a full battery right now. And then to put it back in, well, we're gonna click it in like that, but you're gonna lock it in by turning the key back towards you. And then when you do that, you feel it tighten down so you know that it's locked. The Ranger S has a UL certification of 2849. The bike is also rated IPX4, which means it is protected from splashing at any angle, but the motor, battery, and display is IP64, which means it is protected from total dust ingress and water spray from any direction. Additional features include plastic fenders, aluminum foldable pedals, a padded seat, with quick release seat post, a rear rack that can hold up to 120 pounds, and a telescopic stem. When you look at the Ranger S in its unfolded position, it is 70 inches long, but this is a folding e-bike. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to fold it. I always start off here with the stem. We're gonna disconnect that, and then we're just gonna bring it down. And then we're gonna push in our pedal here, bring it up, and then I'm gonna unlock this frame. From there, I'm gonna bring the bike back on itself. Come here, you. Until it's folded all the way up. When folded, the Ranger S is 40 inches long, 31 inches tall, and 20 inches wide. Let's talk size and fit. Now, when it comes to uh, riding this bike, this says adjust, and so does the seat and it does have numbers on the back, but I'm gonna take it all the way down to the bottom. Uh, let's drop this down a little bit farther as well. 
this is going to be your setup for your 411 rider. I mean, I feel like that is super, super duper low. And then for your tallest rider, well, it is good that it does have numbers here on the back. I took it up to its very highest point here. Let's see if we can do the same with this. Yeah, there we go. And that is going to be your setup for your 6'3 rider, which I think is pretty tall. Now, for me, I am 5'11". I'm kidding. I'm 5'9". But it depends on what shoes I'm wearing. But right now, 5'9". And I'm going to put it to my setting right here. I also have a 32-inch inseam, weigh about 225 pounds. And this is what I'm going to look like riding this bike today. Cockpit operations. On your left-hand side, you have this very nice double-locking grip. It has a leather cover over it and this palm rest right here. This is your front brake. And then right here is your entire control center. To turn on the bike, you're just going to hold this power button right here until your screen comes on. This is your screen. It is full color. Up here, you can see your battery uh, indicator level right here. This is going to tell your speedometer. This is going to tell your pedal assist level. And this is going to give you some various information. To go up in pedal assist levels, there is a plus button right here. You're just going to click it. As you can see, it changes on the screen all the way up into pedal assist number five. To lower it, we're just going to use the minus button and you can take it all the way down to zero. If you want to see the information here change, there is a button over here on the side towards the top. You're just going to push it real quick. There, now it shows the odometer, your max speed, your average speed, your voltage, and then it goes back to trip. There is a second button right here, which is close to the power button. And if you click it, normally that would turn on the headlights on a bike. But this feature does not work. The only thing you'll be able to use this button for is to dim this screen at nighttime. But if you want to turn your headlights on, you're going to have to go ahead and use these right here. A cool feature about this bike is whenever you turn the bike on, this headlight feature, it lights up the word hay bike. And that's what when you don't have the headlight on, that's what people can see. It is lit up on the front and the back, and you ride around with it like that. I think that looks really cool. To turn your headlight on, you're just going to click that button up there. And then to turn it off, you're just going to bring it back down. This is what your headlight looks like when the bike is turned on. And when you flip the, the light switch, it brightens up for nighttime riding. When you turn it off, the Halite bike still lights up. This bike also has turn signals right here. You're going to click it to the left. Click it to the right, and that's in the middle. This shows you what your turn signals look like. That's your left one. That is your right one. I really like the fact that there are turn signals on the front of this bike as well as the back. This is what your tail light looks like when the bike is turned on. This is what it looks like when you hit the brakes. And here are your turn signals from the rear. There are no noises or indicator on the screen to let you know that your turn signals are on. So you're just gonna have to feel it and just know that it's in the middle and you'll know your, head, your turn signals are off. It also has a horn. On your right hand side, you have your rear brake lever right here. This is your throttle. This controls whether the headlight turns on automatically or not. And this is your thumb shifter. To go down in gear, you're just gonna use your thumb and click the lever and to go up in gear, you just push the button. Let's hop into some advanced settings. There's not too many of them that we're going to change. To get into there, we're going to hold the plus and minus button down together. And that brings you into here. And then we have our different P levels. Right now, the ones that we're going to be interested in is P02, which will change between mileage and kilometers. And if you wanted to go in there and change that information, you're going to use that upper button right there. You click it. It takes you down into there. You can use your plus and minus to change it. As you can see, we just put it into kilometers. And now we put it back to miles and then we're going to confirm it by hitting that button again. And now we can bounce to the other programming levels from there. This is 48 volts. We're not messing with that. This is where you can set up different pedal assist levels on your bike. Let's see what we can do. You can have whenever you turn the bike off, it starts off in pedal assist number one through five, or you can have three pedal assist levels. And then from there, the only one right here, that's your speed limit. You can't change this any higher than 62. And everything else they tell you not to mess with. Now to get out of this screen, well, you're just going to turn the bike off by holding the power button. Let's go ahead and clear out our trip meter. To do that, we're going to hold the negative button and the I button here together, and it's going to clear it out. I have to tell you, I'm pretty excited to get this bike 
out on the road and see how it does. Haybike has an app as well. So let's go ahead and add the bike to it. Looks like it's pretty simple to add. Let's take a look at what the features do. Okay, it looks like it will track your ride. We'll go ahead and you know what? We're just gonna track the ride, which is what we will do. Uh, in here shows uh, rides this week. Uh, you can change your pedal assist levels. Let's see if we have to upgrade the firmware. We are on the latest version. Great. Personalize. Here we go. Throttle speed limiter off. So if we had that on, it would be limited to your pedal assist levels. This is where we can choose our pedal assist levels. Oh my gosh. Looks like we can control how much speed each one of these have. Yeah, nice. So that way you can set that up that way. Nice feature. We're going to leave it off because that's how it came from the factory. So we can reset the trip distance, which I've already done that. Top speed, got it on that. But you can make it to where it goes a lot slower if you want. Now we're going to go ahead and start Strava as well. As you can see, the trip shows that it's zero. This will be at zero. Actually, it shows 0.2 miles distance. We haven't even gone anywhere. So that'll be interesting. We are out here on the 606 trail here in Chicago. I have it in pedal assist zero, which means it's not giving us any assist to the pedaling. We're just riding it like a normal bike. The throttle doesn't work, none of that. And right now we're cruising about 12 miles an hour, which is pretty good for us not to have any power going to the bike. Feels pretty comfortable, I have it in gear five. Let's go ahead and test out the throttle. We have it in pedal assist number one. Now, if you saw on the, uh, on the app, I went ahead and unlocked it. So we should be able to go full speed. We're gonna find out what the top speed on this bike is. Let's go. Ooh, it, it is, it has an aggressive pickup. Ooh, this, this bike's gonna be fast today. Oh, we are moving out. Ooh, 31, let's go, let's go. All right, it's locked out at 31 miles an hour, throttle only. This bike has a torque sensor on it. The, the 750 version has a cadence sensor. This one has a torque sensor on it. We are in pedal assist number two and we're cruising at about 15 miles an hour. But if I start cranking hard, we're gonna test it out to see how much faster this bike's gonna go. So just by adding more pressure to the bike, ooh. All right, here's something interesting. It's only gonna let us cruise at 17 miles an hour. So it only jumps up two miles an hour. With other bikes and their torque sensors, you are able to shoot up uh, a lot faster than that. Actually, you can shoot up to about as fast as you can pedal. Let's go ahead and test and see how fast the uh, throttle would go from zero to 31 miles an hour. And here we go. Here we go. It seems once you hit uh, 28 miles an hour, it takes it a little bit longer to get to that top speed of 31, but it does make it for sure. I mean, I still think that is pretty quick. It did it in less time than it takes most bikes just to hit 28. Now we're gonna try this using pedal assist only. I have it in gear four, pedal assist number five, and let's go. Oh, I brought the front wheel off the ground. <laughs> That's that 100 Newton meters of torque, baby. Let's go. We're clicking it up in gear. We're already in gear seven. Come on. Oh, 30 miles an hour is the only, it's the highest I can get it while pedaling. So it gets to 30 real quick, but I couldn't hit 31. It is that time of the review where we take this thing off road, let's go. I mean, this throttle really just definitely makes this bike haul butt. Oh, pulled the front tire off right there. Pull it up, oh, oh man, oh. This thing is, it's a beast. This might be one of the most powerful folding e-bikes I have reviewed. Holy cow, this thing goes. Did not want to shoot out in front of that person. You know, as I'm thinking about like my initial reviews on this bike is that seat super comfortable, that's good. Throttle, super responsive. So is the pedal assist on this thing. Grips feel great, although I'm wearing gloves, but I can tell. This is just gonna be a great ride today. I can tell just how this bike is handling and just how it performs and just how it feels.
It is time for the hill climb. This hill ahead of me goes from 18 to 20% grade, and I, I expect a lot of things out of this bike, just how it performs. We're gonna do throttle only. We're gonna see how it makes it up the hill. I mean, I know it's not gonna be an issue at all, not with 100 newton meters of torque, and it's not. I mean, we're cruising at like 11 miles an hour. Let's get that front tire up. Woo, let's go. <laughs> yeah, we were doing 11 to 12 miles an hour, just throttle only. I had a feeling this thing would be a beast. Now we are going to do pedal assist only. I still have it in pedal assist number five, dropped it down to gear three. Let's see how the bike handles going up the hill. Oh my gosh, we just launched right out of the gate. Oh, this thing is so awesome. I don't even know if my drone's able to keep up, but we rocketed up this thing at 15 to 16 miles an hour. Oh, I'm gonna have to try to see if I can get this thing and put it on the big hill. This thing is a torque monster. It is time for the brake test. Now we're gonna do two different ones. If I keep it in pedal assist number three, it's gonna take me about 20 miles an hour. And that's if you guys decide to leave this in like a class two uh, mode. And then the second one we're gonna do is we're gonna do it at full speed. And we're gonna see how both of these speeds, well, how the bike stops with both of these speeds. Ooh, oh, oh, I felt like the back tire wanted to come up. Only at 20 miles an hour, we're at 21 feet. All right, brake test number two, full speed. We're just gonna throttle it to the thing. This thing goes pretty quick. Ooh, I felt it skip up a little bit. And we are right at 33 feet. The brakes feel definitely in control. I'm gonna say that if you have to stop real quick, just lean back a little bit and put more of that weight towards the back. You'll be just fine. I mean, this thing felt really good when it stopped. Let's go ahead and test out the walk feature on this bike. We're gonna put it in pedal assist number zero. We're gonna hold the minus key down and with well, the minus button. Ooh, oh, 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 it's funky. Let's try that again. Oh boy. <laughs> wow, this bike is aggressive. I mean, three miles an hour, almost four miles an hour in the walk mode. That might be a little bit too much for some people. But man, I already know that we're gonna make it up this thing no problem using throttle only. So let's go. Uh, I think that was probably about the most aggressive uh, uh, walk feature that I have reviewed on a bike. Just everything about this bike seems to be elevated. I mean, they're like, let's build the meanest folding fat tire e-bike we can. Let's go ahead and do the sand test. Now it has been raining the past couple of days. So this rain, the sands have packed down some, but I wanted to bring it to like a bigger beach area because I have a feeling this bike is just gonna tear through it. Now I'm gonna put it in pedal system number five in case I have to help it pedal some, but right now I have a feeling that throttle's just gonna get us through. So let's go and see what happens. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I kick it down to some gears just so I can pedal. Oh, just to, for my balance but we are just cutting right through this stuff. I mean, you can see how, uh, how deep it is and how it just doesn't, uh, other bikes wouldn't be able to handle being out at this part of the beach. But this bike right here is just, we're just cutting right through it. Let me just put it down into a lower gear and you guys can just see, I mean, we are just plowing right through this sand. Oh. <laughs> oh yes oh i felt like i probably could have dragged something else behind me so not only will this bike get you through the beach it'll 100 percent get you through the beach as you can see it's an overcast day we are downtown this is lakeshore trail that right here is lake michigan and we are going to take this thing down the road because i mean it shows that we dropped down to two bars which is funny because when it's not providing any pressure, oh, actually, we don't, I don't, didn't want to be in pedal assist number five, but now it just dropped, it jumped up and now the battery's showing that we've only dropped one bar. It's one of these kind of battery management systems where you're going to have issues figuring out what the power is on the battery. Oh, wait a minute, I remember it should tell us, there we go. This is telling us how many volts we have. And right now it's showing that we're at 46.7. So we'll have to take a look at our chart and see actually how much battery we have. 
but I'm really glad that it has this feature. I almost forgot, you know, <laughs> that, that it has that ability, which is definitely gonna help when figuring out how much battery power we have. For most of this review, I'm in pedal assist number three, cruising about 20 miles an hour, because right there, that is like my comfort speed. This is what I feel best. And also I feel like I can get a decent amount of range out of a bike when I just ride it like right in the middle. Let's go ahead and try out this horn. Well, people notice it, so that's good. It's not an aggressive horn, but it is loud enough to get people's attention. All right, guys, let's go ahead and see how the turn signals look. This is your left-hand one on the front here, which I'm a huge fan of. I like the fact that this thing has turn signals here on the front, and there we go on the right. And then this is what they look like on the rear. That's your left. That is your right. Here's our brake light. That's what that looks like. And this right here, this is what you look like when you're riding it. As you can see, I'm still sitting up pretty straight, you know, with this adjustable stem here on the front and on the back, I can really adjust how I want to sit on this bike. I think it's one of the, uh, I mean, this thing's super comfortable. I think every, there's a lot of things that I really like about this bike. Now it is possible to get some accessories with this bike. Currently, um, I have the front and rear basket for this thing. Now I do feel like the baskets are pretty heavy, but if you wanted to use this bike to go ahead and like do deliveries or something like that or use it as a utility bike, you can get them off the website. They have them for sale. See this big hill? I definitely want to hit it. I think this bike can handle it. We're going to find out. This is not something I would put uh, any other bike on normally unless it's a dual drive bike, but I'm really sure that I just have a good feeling about this bike, but it shows that we're at 47 volts right now. If we take a look at the battery, it shows that we're at 55% battery power left. So I believe that we have the power to make it up this hill. It is time to do a second hill climb, a monster hill climb. This thing hits 20 degrees pretty quick and then shoots all the way up to 31. Now, the funny part is, is now that I'm sitting here looking at it, uh, I'm not really sure, <laughs> but they don't, they don't advertise that this bike can make it up this hill. So we're, uh, well, let's just go find out. <laughs> we're gonna use throttle and then pedal if I need to. The grass is kind of wet as well. So we're not doing anything to really help this thing out. Oh yeah, we're not gonna make it. So let's go ahead and do some pedaling. We're gonna kick it down into gear. Yeah, yeah, come on, come on. Oh, well look at that. We made it up here without really any effort. I mean, yeah, we did have to pedal, but I, I know other bikes that wouldn't even made it up that hill if we did or didn't pedal. All right, we're gonna get a running start at it. And let's see what happens if we can just do a throttle only. Let me find this little trail right here where other people have gone up. And let's see just how far we can make it up. We're already well over past the 20 degrees. That, uh, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> oh, let's pedal. Let's pedal. Oh, oh, oh. Look at that, we still made it. <laughs> I am, I apologize to this bike for what I just did to it. Yeah, I do believe this is one of the most powerful folding bikes I have reviewed, if not the most powerful one. And that's the only reason that I put it on that big hill. So right now we're gonna start heading back home. Um, I mean, uh, the only reason I came all the way out here was to hit that. And now that I have, we'll start heading back to the house. Who knows, I may or may not have enough power to make it back. But the cool thing is this is a folding e-bike. So let's say if I was too far from the house when this bike ran out, I could just call an Uber and we'll put it in the trunk. Over here on the right-hand side, underneath the throttle, is this auto button. And many people don't know what that is for, but it's actually for uh, the headlight so that it will come on automatically on and off. But now there's a problem with that because whether this bike is turned on or turned off, if the battery has any power in it and you have it set on auto and you put it in your garage or something, that light's going to come on and it will drain your battery. So I think it was kind of the auto feature on this thing. Having a button on the outside is kind of a bad idea. I think they should have just had it in the display. And then also it needs to not work whenever the bike is off. Guys, main, that's like the main flaw, like maybe like the only flaw I have seen in this bike. Oh, you know, these pedals feel kind of small. So, I mean, that, that I can change out. I can change it out to bigger pedals, but I can't fix this auto thing. I just have to make sure I don't hit it and turn on the auto headlight. We have made it to the 606 trail, which means I'm 3.3 miles from the house. 
I'm looking down at the battery level, shows that we're at 41.7%. If I take a look at the uh, guide here, it shows that we are at 15% battery power. So let's see if we're gonna have enough to make it home. The nice thing is though, it's not pulsing. I mean, it's still giving me power. I mean, we're down to the last 5% and I'm still cruising at 18 miles an hour in pedal assist number three. Let's see if the throttle works at this low level. All right, so the throttle's still working. It has this at 12 miles an hour. But if I'm pedaling, I can go faster. I had to go ahead and kick it down into gear four. The bike is starting to feel heavy. It's starting to slow down, but it is still giving me assist for sure. Actually, let's go ahead and put it back into five. Five feels pretty good. At this point, we're gonna take it home. I can tell this thing is about to die here. And uh, I'll give you my final thoughts. I can't tell if I've lost power or assist to the bike or not. So let me go ahead and try the throttle. Throttle still got us creeping. <laughs> at 10 miles an hour. I could have done this more perfect. I mean, this thing's gonna be totally dead by the time I make it to the house. That is awesome. It is time for my final thoughts. Now, when it comes to the mileage on this bike, when I take a look at the display, the display shows that we went 28.5 miles and Strava shows that we went 25.45 miles. So Strava is showing that we've gone about three miles less than what the display shows. And I'm going to have to give it to Strava because Strava has been very consistent with me on showing me how far a bike actually goes. So if you're looking at the display, the display is going to show that you've gone a little bit farther than what you actually have. Although <laughs> when it comes to the hay bike, um, if you remember, I turned on the hay bike app to track our ride. Um, it, it tapped out at a little bit over 15 miles. I don't know why it only tracked that amount, but that shows me that that one's uh, a little bit inconsistent and I would use a separate app to track my mileage instead of the hay bike, instead of the hay bike app. That's kind of, that's kind of a tongue twister. So <laughs> let's talk about all the things that I think is great about this bike. I'm a huge fan of the turn signals, even though it doesn't beep or make noise or give me any kind of indication on the display. I like the fact that it has front and rear turn signals. I mean, for me that I, as I was coming up on people and using it, I was very happy with the fact that that was there. Now it doesn't make, you know, it doesn't make noise or anything like that, but you can, you can feel the click. I don't know if you can hear that, but you can feel the click on it and it just lets you know whether it is, you know, engaged or not. So I, I still think that's a win. Uh, it would have been nice if it beeped or left an indication on the display, but I still, I still would use these turn signals an awful lot. The bike rides extremely well. It is a beast when it takes off. It feels very powerful while you ride it. It's a great hill climber. It does well in the sand. It breaks well. There's really not much I can say bad about this bike at all. As a matter of fact, it's gonna end up in my best of 2024 when it comes to the folding uh, the folding bikes. I mean, it's just, it might be number one. I don't know, I gotta check out some of my reviews, but it's, it's way up there for sure. This is a solid, solid folding e-bike. Now there are a couple of things that I would change. Uh, this pedal, I would get a bigger pedal. Um, it just felt kind of small for me, especially because I'm wearing boots right now. And I'm not a fan of this auto headlight feature that's this button right here. I don't even think that should, should be there because if you have the auto headlight turned on and you put this in your garage or something like that and it gets dark, whether the bike is turned on or not, it's gonna activate. And because of that, it's gonna kill your battery if you have that feature on. I think maybe with the next model, they don't have a separate button. It doesn't need it. They just build it in with the display and that way it wouldn't work if the bike was turned off. But I have to tell you guys, this, this is a solid bike. This really is. And they have that Black Friday sale going on right now. So you can get hundred dollars off of it. Uh, and even if not, then, you know, it's gonna go up a hundred bucks if depending on when you're watching this. But still, I think if you were looking for a folding e-bike that's gonna perform as well as any big bike, the Hay Bike Ranger S could be the one for you. So if you are interested in it, I'm gonna leave a link down in the description below. Um, I believe I have a discount code. I don't know, you just take a look in the description. You'll see if I have one. And also, you know, gosh, it's just, this thing was a good time. It really, really was. I can't say enough good things about this bike because I really enjoyed it. I mean, I had a really good time today. So that's it. That's all I have for the Hay Bike Ranger S. And I wanna thank you for watching. So until I see you again, enjoy the ride.